Welcome, welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. As you can see by your guest today, I'm Tony Haggerty at A Haggerty Chen on the X or the Twitter handle. I'm joined today by comedian, funny man, and good friend of the show, Des McLean, who's live from Harry's Bar. Uh, Desmond, how are you, sir? I'm very well. Um, good morning to you, Tony, um, and uh, all our, our viewers, listeners, uh, whatever, <laughs> you know, podcasters, YouTubers, Facebookers, whatever you want to call yourself. Can I just say it's, it's a massive relief and a pleasure to be finally on after you normally bring me in. For those yeah. of you who the last time, he got me in after Celtic. Got, I said, well, pop six, nothing, right away, Atletico. But I haven't forgotten about that. <laughs> Nobody wanted the gig, and I, I described myself as the Graham Murty of podcast punditry. You, you didn't, you, you, you just went, I'm going to shine the bat light over towards <laughs> and, get and you got me in again, so I had to go there 6-0, and you know what? It was actually really, really good feedback we got off all the punters. They were very... Indeed. They were very... Um, that day. They were actually very nice, and it was all mostly positive comments, you know. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was, do you know what? That's why these... These podcasts are here, so we can all share our correct. You know, it's very nice. Lovely to be back. Yes, indeed. Uh, I'll get Desi thoughts on all things Celtic in a minute, but this is where Des nips to Silverburn and gets a Christmas shop. <laughs> as, 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 as he said to me off here, it's always under the as I talk about uh, our sponsors and boilers, as you can see. The <laughs> The Celtic Way Morning Briefing is brought to you by MPH Group. They're Scotland's award-winning family-run all-trade specialists covering all of mainland Scotland. And every service you opt for automatically enters you into MPH's incredible holiday giveaway. And you could win a seven-night stay at the luxurious five-star Moon Palace Resort in Cancun, Mexico. And with winter rolling in, if you're thinking of giving your home heating system a boost, MPH has an enticing navi and boiler winter promotion for you. And if you opt for an Avian boiler installation through MPH Boilers, not only are you choosing, cho choosing top tier efficiency, but you're also getting a free Navian internet controller. And that little gadget can crank up your boiler's efficiency to an impressive 98%. And the cherry on top of that is that they're covering the first year service with no added costs. And if you're wondering why Navian, well, they're gunning for the product of the year at the HV News Awards, which is the Oscar of the Heating World. And to top it all off, the Navian on range comes with a 12 year parts and labour warranty, which give you some serious peace of mind right there. So a big shout out to MPH as they're nominated for the Small Company of the Year at the same awards and they even offer flexible finance options. So if you're gearing up for the winter chill, consider making a smart move with MPH and Navin and you'll find all the links to MPH's social media and telephone number in the description of this video. We say thank you to them for that. Des, you still with us? Are you still here? <laughs> I'm so, I, I managed, I only got to Bray Head when the floor <laughs> and I got some presents in there, and that was quite handy. Thanks for creating that time for me. <laughs> Can I just say, speaking of Christmas, it's yeah. the most wonderful time. <laughs> ben Delaberti is back at the Pavilion Theatre, Glasgow. This is a Christmas present for any Celtic fan, whether it's your mum, dad, brother, sister, any Celtic fan, your pal. Your Ranger supporting pal, boo! They've actually come along as well. It's a brilliant uh, production written by Jim Orr. I, myself, I play the great Bertie Old, the legend, and it's just, if you love nostalgia, if you love Celtic, if you love Bertie, if you love going out to the Pavilion Theatre, that's it. A wee stocking filler. It's back in February. There you go. Thank you. No worries. And it was the anniversary of Bertie's sad passing this week, wasn't it, Des? And, it uh, was this week, yes. If you haven't read it, I'll put it up in the comment section. There's a tribute that I always put up uh, for Bertie Old. Uh, and you can have a wee read at that, guys. Maybe take a box of hankies with you. In the process, he was a good pal of mine, good pal of Desi's as well. And uh, yeah, just a force of nature, as I described him. And, you know, just uh, I've spoken a lot about Bertie. I've spoken on this podcast. I've spoken on another podcast about him. But just became a very, very good friend, and it's hard not to think of him at this time of the year. Obviously, when the anniversary of his passing comes, and 
everybody's every Celtic supporter has a, a Bertie old story because every Celtic supporter met him does. <laughs> every <laughs> time for every single person in Glasgow, let alone you know every single person. He would stop and it, a force of nature, as you said, Tony. We could we could talk all morning, all day about Bertie old. But this week was a it was a, a sad time because it was the second anniversary of the passing of the great man for his family and all that. I've seen a lot of tributes going up, but oh, I mean, amazing. And do you know it's funny because apart from the fact that he was the greatest Celtic personality, in my opinion, he was Mister Celtic. However, he wasn't a bad player. I was explaining we were talking about this off air. Mm-hmm. I was talking to a couple of the younger generation. And uh, they were asking, what kind of player was Bertie Old? And I said, well, <laughs> imagine. I mean, it was way before our, our time. My dad my da, uh, loved him as a player. But watching all the footage and what have you, some of the some Celtic fans watching of a certain vintage will agree. I was trying to explain to these young fans that, OK, see, you had a mix of the hardness of Scott Brown, the bold, thuggery, gallusness, right, right, of Bruni, mixed with the sweet left foot of John Collins. That's Bertie Old. Am I right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, he was uh, a fine player. My father said he was. He said that uh, he doesn't use the term world class very often, but he said that Bobby Murdoch was world class, and he said Bertie Old uh, he did and abetted Bobby Murdoch to be world class. So there you go. I think that's as high a compliment as you get, you know. So yeah. Uh, as you said a while ago, one of the greatest ideas ever. <laughs> It has to happen. The 10.30 tunnel. I keep banging on about it, yeah, with all those can they play and all that kind of stuff, yeah. Entertain. Imagine that on the Celtic uh, tunnel. Has to be. I thought we'd always say you have the ability to entertain, to go out there and entertain. No, the tunnel would be amazing. How? It it would be the equivalent of this is Anfield, wouldn't it? You know, entertain, can they play, all that. I just put them. On, on the tenth, the ten thirty tunnel, the ten thirty tunnel, with a few of those expressions synonymous with Bertie. Yeah, I mean, I would, I don't Careful. know. Just, and and even the, the lyrics to the Celtic song, yeah, because he was everywhere he went. That's what he did. He just started, he started the sing song, didn't he? And I, yeah. as I said, and uh, if you've not read the tribute, I, I ended with these lines. You and you'll agree with it, Des. <clears throat> I said it was a wonderful life and a wonderful gift that Bertie Old was to Celtic and their faithful supporters. And I said if there's to be any sort of silver lining that he can take from his passing, it's possibly that he'll now be reunited with the likes of Ronnie Simpson, Tommy Gemmel, mm-hmm. Bobby Murdoch, Billy McNeil, Jimmy Johnson, Stevie Chalmers, and of course Jock Steen. I said that thought alone should fill every Celtic supporter's heart with joy, yet somehow it's still enough to make your heart grow sad. Goodbye, yeah. Mr. Celtic. Yeah, it was Mr. Celtic. He was. And anyway, I mean, it's everyone's got an opinion, but the greatest Celtic personality. And anyway, oh, know, man. <laughs> I, I, I liken them to Bob Monkhouse because everybody said Bob Monkhouse was the, the million joke man, right? Very well, was a million story and song man. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got entertainment with Bertie, he told you a story and then he sang a song. That was him in a nutshell. If, if anybody has got, if anybody out there has got a couple of minutes to sum Bertie, Bertie up, you know, within his, his impact on people, just go and go to YouTube and look at the Ronnie O'Sullivan clip. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ronnie yeah. Sullivan, yeah. we'd never met him before. <laughs> he was totally, man, he was taken so into it, and he's like, oh, I had him in hysterics. He was like, bang, 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 wisecracks. The bold Ronnie was like, who is this guy? He was absolutely in hysterics and. To come down to the crucible, do they, you know? So that that little clip just shows you Bertie, his finest, cracking all the gags. All right, son, and you know, amazing, amazing force of nature, the greatest. Yeah, yeah right. We could talk about the great man all day, but we'll talk about more current matters. And the title of the briefing days, and we spoke off air about this, and you said you're involved in various group chats, and you've mentioned this guy as well. But I've said, should Celtic sign Lawrence Shankland in January? Is he a person of interest? Should he be on Celtic's transfer radar come January? Considering that we're going to lose a lot of players for the Asian Cup and mostly strikers, Kyogo, Dyson Maeda and Go are all probably going to be uh, headed for the Asia 
Asian Cup. So it's a it's a no-brainer that Celtic sign a striker. Mm-hmm. And I'm posing the question, should that striker be Lauren Shankland? And he scored a goal for Scotland last night as well. So his reputation is, is and he stocks as high as it gets. Yeah. And, I, and I'm asking the question, should Celtic be interested in him? And I think they should. I said this to you, well, we're talking about this off air. Simple answer, yes. I said a while ago, why don't we go for that boy Shankland when he was at the D United, right? He's the kind of guy, like, when Celtic signed Brian McClare at Motherwell, you're thinking, this guy, when he goes to Celtic, he's going to get, you know, so much more chances. He's going to, players like that, you know. And, you you know, he, he's, he's the only kind of a bright spark at heart. So you imagine him at Celtic. And before all the comments come in and go, he's no Celtic class, they've got millions in the bank, it's all, all, all well, right? No, but he's the kind of guy, he knows where the goal is. What is he, 28? 28? 28 years. 28? I mean, that's, that's, that's your prime. And I said a while ago that Shankland, uh, he knows how to put the ball away. And yes, he's the kind of guy. And listen, we've not got much backup at all for Kyogo. So, you know, we're kind of playing a, 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 you know, it's a fine line there. Etten Hampsey, Kyogo, what, what are we going to do? So, and O's still a wee bit raw, I think, you know. But Shankland, yes, he's a prolific scorer. The guy will, the guy will score goals wherever he goes. You've got a lot more chances at Selig. He's got five goals this season, Des, including one against Celtic in the 4-1 game, but yeah. cracking strike, he whipped it in right. at the corner and off the post, and also a header at Ibrox, which was a brilliant header uh, in the recent game at Ibrox. So he can score you know, against the top teams. It's not as if he's scoring against teams that you don't uh, that you don't rate in that sense. But So I, uh, I just think if Celtic are in the market for a striker, which they probably will be, then... They could do no worse than look at Shanklin and certainly put him on a list and ask the question. And uh, and because uh, uh, he knows the terrain, he knows the teams he's playing against, and he scored against all, probably every every other team in that league. So I I just think I'm trying to you know put the jigsaw pieces together, and, and I think it would be worthwhile. And as you say, you could get a good couple of years out of Shanklin because he has approached in his prime in his career. I thought he was older because it's almost like he's been overlooked by a lot of big teams. They're thinking, no, Phil, with some disrespect to Hearts, this is not a good Hearts team that he's in. And he's the guy that's kind of keeping them, you know, a, a wee bit of glimmer of hope. But if he went to Celtic, why no? As I say, you are going to get them gone. It's only Lauren Shankland. But you need players like that, you know, to come in who know the league and uh, they, they know what it's all about. He would do a job for Celtic. People will disagree, but you know what? A wee bit of backup, even, or if he gets his chance, he's the kind of guy who would probably take it. No, why yeah. not? I think it would be a decent signing. Yes. And I think we should have signed him a while ago when, you know, and he could have slotted in Sell a couple of years ago. I think he's a good striker. Uh, so do I. I think, uh, I think st- there are certain strikers who know where the net is, and he's one of them. Yeah. Well, not, not all strikers know where the net is. Some can struggle, but I just think he's one of these guys. I think you're right, like a, a Brian McClear type. Who could come in and uh, hit the ground running and score straight away and become a decent player for Celtic? Again, as you say, opinions will be polarised on this particular issue. Of course, it will. Others' opinion will be polarised for the fact that they think that he, his loyalties lie somewhere else in Glasgow. But we spoke about this off air as well, didn't we? And you, you said if Celtic asked the question, then it's a no-brainer. I mean, surely those, I know that, again, people are going to disagree, but surely we've kind of moved on. This is a, a young guy, 28. It's not the team that he supports. Mm. Big deal. If he says yeah. to his family, I've got a chance to go to Celtic, it's going to be a lot more money, chance of playing in Europe for a wee while, and then um, before we get knocked out. So, so and, uh, <laughs> if you, nobody, would, nobody would knock that back. Nobody, you know, there's no way he would knock that back. That would be a massive, massive move for Lorne Shankland. And whether he supports Rangers or, or whatever, surely he's thinking, yeah. you know, year wise, this is a it's a, a bigger move. Chance to work with someone that bring, under someone like Brendan Rodgers as well. Exactly. Yes. I, I, under a great manager like <laughs> Rodgers. You know, so. <coughs> so I, I think that ticks a lot of boxes for any young striker, doesn't it? Who, who's approaching their prime years. And he's just, you know, through, through that, has got themselves into the Scotland squad. Without playing for one of the big two. No, that's an achievement the Celtic <laughs> players who are really poor at the moment. And then he's got to sell into Scotland team, right? And he's probably thinking, 
I might have missed the boat here. Am I going to really get that big move? Because he's too good a player to be languishing away with the likes of Hearts. You know, so if he was to go to some the Celtic would be a great move for him. And it might always be, it might be a great move for Celtic. He could really be a good one. I think he scores goals from everywhere. That that he scored two goals two weekends in a row, Celtic uh, and Rangers. And uh, yeah, he's definitely a striker. He's, he knows he knows how to put the ball away, definitely. And we mentioned before. Right, no, Pete. nobody said he was as good. Yes. This yes. Is a you have to listen in a podcast, you have to listen what the what the, the presenter and his guests are saying, we are saying it's a similar situation where you could take someone from another from club like Motherwell or from Hearts to Celtic and they could do the job of scoring goals. Nobody's compared the two players for no, series no, as good no, as McClare. We are comparing the situations. Thank you. Yes, so come on, Pete. I said the other day, don't agree with everything that you say. Have to shoot that one down because we didn't compare them. Yeah. You need to listen to what we're saying. It's a it's a prerequisite for a podcast. Listen to what the guys are saying, That's not what you think they're saying with word association. This is and, a day when you go on a podcast and everybody's sitting there like that, just ready to right. Yeah, and, and, it, and straight away. It always nobody said, nobody said at all he was. McClair was phenomenal player. We're saying the situation, smaller club goes to a bigger club. Gets more chances, will score more goals. Simple as that. <laughs> to break it down in layman terms, that's exactly what we'll say. Now, lots of comments coming in. Shankland would score goals with the service. Wouldn't be a bad buy, in my opinion. That's what we're saying. Pablo 67. Gordon Flowers, straight to the point. Yes. Yes. PUG saying is Shankland better than Kyogo? No. Is he as good as better than O? No. What would be the point of saying him? Celtic need a third choice striker, but he's got to be he's got to be at least as good as O or better. Well, I think there's an argument that he is as good as O or better. So, no to Shankland. We never yeah. know unless you ask the question yeah. and the, the player comes. We are mulling it over because the guy is flavour of the month. He's played for Scotland. He's just scored his first goal for Scotland. And he is a person who should be on some kind of radar. And Celtic should possibly ans- ask the question. Gordon Coney, the question should be, would Shankland be happy to play second or even third fiddle to Kyogo and O? He play. But he wouldn't be playing second or third fiddle to Kyogo to know while the Asian Cup's on. Yes. And you would it have a right good chance to make a name for yourself, yeah? If somebody like Lauren Shanklin goes to a team as big as Celtic, he's not going to expect to be first choice. So he knows that he's going to have to work, you know, and wait in his chance, which happens. And uh, um, somebody was saying there, is he as good as, oh, no. Before O scored that that we double there, yeah. I mean, the, the, you would have to say Shankland O. I think Shankland's probably, you know, that that's an argument. I, I think yeah. the jury's out on O. So you couldn't really say this is all, you know. Yeah. So a big yeah. no, a big no a from, big from him. From do Hallowell, Peter. I think they're entitled to their opinion. I'm I'm throwing them out there. John Summers, I think Shankland be a good attribute. Celtic will need cover up front when the Asian Cup starts. That I've yep. got that in my head and, and mind. Jerry Smith, yes, because Shankland would get great service playing with Celtic. It's a kind of... Michael Ross, how much would Hearts ask for Shankland? Well, that's a question you'd have to ask Hearts and probably they would ask for between two and three million, I would conjecture. Uh, Hazel Finn was just thinking the same thing. Patrick McLaughlin, he's a player who could also score in Europe in high-pressure games. I think so too. Pablo 67, loyalties are size. He would be a good signing for Celtic. Yeah. So, lots of people in agreement. Some saying no. Uh, so, yep, yeah, and others still mentioning McLear, but we've covered that, <laughs> we uh, say extens- that extensively. So, there we go. So, yeah, indeed. Uh, so, yep. So, yeah, uh, Liam Devine, the idea is right with Shanklin in terms of style of player, but we need a higher quality if Celtic want to be serious about the Champions League. Again, I, I, that's another argument, isn't it, as well? Uh, and JM coming in saying Shankland will be a brilliant sign and bring up the quality of the player being OK, being second fiddle, but he's a great fit. So, mm. yeah, lots of Celtic supporters on board with it. And Hazel Finn saying Shankland could come in and do a Liam Scales. You never know. Correct. That's, you remember Scales wasn't selling class a few games ago. <laughs> whatever <laughs> that, whatever that phrase means, Des. <laughs> right, right. And it's a, he's no selling class, but now Scales is Franco Barese. And now it's a good <laughs> Yeah. Like, 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 Scales is a much better player. It doesn't take you long with Selic fans to kind of a change, you know, the old fickle Selic fans, right? And uh, so, 
And we're not saying the guy's a marquee signing. Nobody's saying that. But he could be a handy wee signing for the pool, you know, in all these games coming up, you know. So he's yeah. not a marquee signing. Of course he's not. He's not. But in a bizarre way, that could be a good thing. Because it's not as if you're, you know, signing a, a Jack Amakis who'll get fed up and want away. He won't. He'll sit and go, I'm with Selig. I'm getting big money. I'm going to wait my turn. You know, so yeah. that might be a bad thing that he's not a big marquee signing. That's yeah. what we're saying. Blake 1 on 1, there's no denying Shankler's quality. He's a scoring international. His height, strength, and instinct for goal. He'd be a great buy for Celtic if he was willing to play for the team. Hallelujah. That's the kind of. That's, that's what we're driving at here, isn't it, Des? You know, that's so, a, a massive yes from Blake Owen. Yes, yes. Yeah, correct. And again, it's a wide church that we have in the Celtic Way community and uh, the comment section. Uh, but yeah, it's again. If you listen to what we're saying, then we're, we're getting there. We're not saying he's as good as or as bad as or better than. We are just thinking that there's a man out there who fits the bill for Celtic who are in the market for a striker because most of their strikers are going away on Asian Cup duty in January. And, you know, there's a void there. And that man fits the bill from what we are seeing so far. If Celtic have other strikers on their radar, great. But we're just put the name in there because he's flavour of the month. He's just scored a goal for Scotland as well. And, you know, you know him and he knows the terrain, he knows the teams that he's playing against and he's scored quite prolifically against them. He even scored against your own side this season, the team you support, and it was a cracking goal. Mm-hmm. And he scored a cracking goal against your rivals, if you want to put it that way, with a header at Ibrook. So I, I like what he brings to the table. And if Celtic were to ask the question, then it wouldn't disappoint me greatly at all, Des. I'd be Listen, quite chuffed at that, you know. Guys like Scott McDonald have scored against us. They're not Brian McLaren either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> guys like that, you know, tight player, right? So we'll lower the bar slightly if it makes you happy, but he will do a job. He knows the terrain. He knows the country. He knows how it works. He's played against the team. He knows their weaknesses. Not marquee, but a decent, useful. And and uh, talk, yeah, and talking about Champions League, he would fill the homegrown quota as well. Of course he would. Right, so there's a lot of box ticking there. Now, the reason I mentioned him as well, because I'm going to bring up the next comment is kind of linked to that, right? Or the next kind of topic of discussion. And we were talking off there about this guy, weren't we? Oh, now, Mike, Mikey Johnson's been in the the papers today, uh, in, the, in the media today, certainly talking about the kind of last chance saloon time at Celtic. We've kind of been talking about the last chance saloon with Mikey Johnson for a while. But the reason I mention this is like this is what Mikey Johnson said, right? It's not happened yet in terms of breaking into the team. Hopefully it does, because a big dream of mine would have been to play in the Champions League for Celtic. It's sort of what I wanted to do as a boy. So hopefully it happens. But if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. No player is going to be happy when they're not playing. Ultimately, it's up to me, and I need to try and force my way into that team. I have until January to do that, and I will try and give, give it everything to do that. But we just have to wait and see what happens. Now... Clicking, uh, joining dots and connecting lines and stuff as I used to do, and I say to you off air, then would something like offering Johnston as a make weight and some money for Shankland, you know, would that help maybe secure some kind of deal? And I think uh, that to me would make perfect business sense for Celtic because I think a lot of Celtic supporters accept that it's maybe not going to happen for Mikey Johnston at Celtic Park, but. He could do a job for somebody like Hearts and Celtic could also, you know, offer some money and maybe try and sweeten a kind of Shanklin deal where there to be interest in that kind of situation. But I, I see that as a kind of no-brainer scenario for me, Des, you know. Yeah, another brilliant uh, Tony Haggerty idea along with the Bertie Tunnel. Go and phone, phone Brendan right now. <laughs> Brendan will go, thank you, you're, you're a great man. Listen, it's, it's that... In theory, that is a brilliant idea because Mikey Johnson is always going to be a whipping boy at Celtic, right? When the chips are down, there's guys who, like Greg Taylor and Mikey and uh, Tony Ralston and all these guys, uh, Joe Hart, when the chips are down, before a game, if we win a few in a row, then it's yes, yes, we've got the all. The team's never looked better, but that's it. The minute that when they go and get stuff, then we, they, it's always the same whipping boys. Mikey Johnson will never, unless, if Johnson, unless Johnson comes on and scores a hat trick, you know, it's like, well, I can't believe we're playing him again. Johnson, well, have we been back in time? To... And he was part of that whole, you know, depressing year when we lost the 10 and all that. So 
Uh, it's just, it's just, he's never ever going to win the Celtic fans over. A wee, you know, a wee trip to Aberdeen or Hearts would be good for him, and he would be the kind of guy who would stand out the way Christie did at Aberdeen. He's the kind of guy that if he went to Hearts, hmm, could be a nice wee, a wee trade off to get, you know, Shanklin. You know, so something like that would make sense, and it would be a good move for me, Mikey. Who is, you know, he's obviously got something. You don't keep, you know. Look, there's, there's no way Mikey's as good as Ryan Christie. You're at it. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's <laughs> if, yeah, if I'm wrong with that one, actually. If you all come in and go, he's not very good. I think he's going to go. Well, no, I, exact, I know exactly what you're saying. But hey, yes, indeed. Now, Pete McGee. Mikey Jones a level of talent undoubtedly, but it's been wasted at Celtic because he's just not good enough to oust anyone else from their position. Keep exactly. Mikey good. Good Mikey's point. had more than enough chances, he's just not good enough. Yeah, I, I've said this a long time about Mikey Johnson. I don't have a down on Mikey Johnson. I think there's talent there. It's just not been able to shine at Celtic for whatever reason. And he's yeah, I I get that he's uh, had a lot of uh, injury setbacks in his career. Be very stop start, and maybe he just needs to get out of that environment and try and you know have a fresh start somewhere else. Scooby Man 76, I think Mikey's done, he's had his chances. And AGSC Tech, Mikey probably needs a move. Where to then? Well, my move to him would be for Tyne Castle, and we'll take Shankland, and you can have a bit of cash as well. That's everyone my still, solution, everyone, and I think everyone's a winner in that day. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's a winner, baby. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's, it. that's hot chocolate, that is. Just when I saw the Chris Morris there in the last one. Um, so that, that would be one little transaction that would be worthwhile, and it would be, yes, a, a winning deal for everybody. Definitely. And listen... As I say, when Christie went to Aberdeen, all that he came back a better player, and Michael Johnson needs to go away somewhere because he's never going to win the Celtic fans over. He's either they've all just said it there. The tributes have been pouring in. He's done. He's finished. He's always injured. You name it. Mikey Johnson is never going to win over the Celtic fans. Poor boy, you know. And yeah, uh, and he and he wants regular first team football because he's now become an, an established Republic of Ireland international, and uh, they rave about him every time he plays for Republic yeah. of Ireland. He's one of these guys who seem to turn it on at international level, but can't do it at club level. It's kind of reverse with Mikey Johnson. It's it's really weird dichotomy and dynamic with them, really, isn't it? Do you know what I'm going to say? He's up there with Owen Archdeacon. He's never <laughs> he's Owen Archdeacon. He's no... So let's see what they want to say, Pete. You know that? They'll be confused now. Owen Archdeacon will see it. So no, no. Mikey Johnson's obviously a talented young footballer, and he's still a young guy, but he has to go somewhere for a year or two. Yeah. To get away from Celtic for a while, because... It's not going to happen, as I say. If he could pull off, if he, if he moves, break down, or he, he's, he's always going to have the fans on his back, you know. So it's just it's not happening from at Celtic. So something miraculous would need to happen for Mikey <laughs> to turn around. It just isn't happening. But the Shanklin thing could be a good wee. Thank you, Helen. Yes, yeah. Helen. Yeah. Helen. Thank you. <laughs> not all of them are good to be fair for me. now and again there's a, a flash of divine inspiration possibly but there you go so yes now Des last night uh, Celtic also played in Cami Kerr's testimonial mm-hmm. and the reason this interested me I saw a picture and Brendan Rogers was there and I, and I was kind of wondering why is he there you know it's Celtic B team young guys well I can imagine why he was there but uh, what intrigued me was that five first team players actually got minutes. Yeah. Scott Bain was in goal, Alexandro Bernabe played, Stephen Wells played, Kobe, Yuki Kobayashi played, and Gustav Lager Bielka also played. And uh, Celtic lost 1 0 to a Kami Kerr last minute penalty, yeah. incidentally, yeah. Uh, in a testimonial. Read into that what you will, ladies and gentlemen. But now, the one that struck me or intrigued me there was Gustav Lager Bielka. Like during, during the week, this guy was voted Sweden's best yeah. defender. Last, <laughs> last last month in the international break, he scored his first international goal. This month in the international break, he's playing for the B team in Cameron Kerr's testimonial at Dens Park. And I'm thinking, you know, you talk about things going off a cliff now. You don't want to preempt anything. And I hope Gustav Lagerbielka can get his career back on track. But you know, the, the Bargadi Barese is keeping them out of the, the team. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I saw that. 
Well, it was a, it was a big, uh, it was a thing online. It was a big shiny star trophy thing that says Lager BLK Swedish Defender of the Year or something like that, wasn't it? Swedish, yes, Swedish player. And I and I've said we he used to play for us. That boy, he was a prospect. We never gave him a chance. But then on further inspection, I find out that he's playing in Cami Kerr's testimonial. <laughs> right. So not only I was like, is he? Obviously, I knew he was this old, but I thought. He's went from he's sitting putting a Swedish international player of the year plaque in his in man cave whilst he's playing against Cami oh, Kerr's club. He, he partnered Liam Scales at Ibrox in the one 0 win earlier yes. this season. And yes. you know, I and I doubt you know, I don't think for a minute that there's a, a footballer in Gustav Lagerbelk. I'm just sort of you know comparing last month to this month, and you think it's a bit of a bit of a come down, as they say. To be fair, did you he know? not have a injury? And then, and obviously, when Cam Vickers yeah. comes in, man, and then you know, you, you can't drop the ball, but easy, you know. So, <laughs> for Gady Barese, I think that might catch <laughs> on, hopefully. <laughs> or hopefully, uh, Pete G coming in and saying, Don't keep agreeing with Tony, we need to challenge him to keep him at his sharpest. <laughs> really I appreciate I'm, that, uh, yeah. yeah. But I mean, we're, we're being flippant, but you know, Gustav Lager Bielka. Has been kept out of the team because of the former Liam Scales. And the biggest compliment you can pay to Liam Scales is people are saying that it's Cameron Carter Vickers and Liam Scales as a defensive partnership moving forward for the foreseeable future. I mean, even Mike Narovsky can't get a look in because of the way Scales is playing. That's seven and a half million pounds worth of defenders there, Des. Nat Phillips has made fleeting appearances as well. So, I mean, Liam Scales is doing everything right, isn't he? And much to Gustav Lagerbielka's and Mike Navrovsky's. You know, chagrin, you know, there's nothing they can do except turn up in training and try and impress a manager and keep keep going and waiting for that chance. Big Navroski, there's another one. Right, you tell me when we had this is a this is a, a good problem to have, right? A good yeah. problem. The fact that Liam Scales, who would have said three months ago that Liam Scales was going to be keeping these big signings? Yeah, the yeah. But the team when Celtic had an abundance of decent centre halves, I can't remember in the last few years when I get back to Martin O'Neill era and that's it. Right now, yeah. Celtic also had trouble with centre halves. We end up getting into games and playing left backs and what have you. We've not had. If these guys are all fit, you know the fact that the two that are sitting at the moment, Carter Vickers and uh, the Bergeri Barese, <laughs> I can't stop saying that now. Uh, Liam Scales. So you know that that's pay, I mean that's testament to how well Scales has turned his form around. Yeah, but, yes. take note. So and, and win the fans over. It, it helps, of course, if you manage the match against Rangers. That always helps, you know. And but in saying that, Lager Bielke had a, ga- a good game. A bit wobbly now and again, but it was decent against Rangers that game. Yeah, and I, and I get that it's maybe a build up to their fitness because guys are coming back from injury, get their minutes, game time. I'm 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 perfectly aware of all that, but as I say, I'm always a big believer in the manager watching them at training, and the manager bases a lot of his uh, eleven selection uh, on the day or, or for any given game on what they, how they perform in training because he kind of tells you that as well and uh, I, it just intrigues me about Lager Bielka it's a curious case isn't it that he's gone from <laughs> there and then you know getting injured nobody can help that but then not getting a look in type thing you know maybe we're, maybe we're overthinking it maybe we're, possibly maybe because maybe he's just said, you know what, I'm going to give you a wee run out. There's a wee kick about going the testimonial and Brendan wants to have a look at him again to see how he, and, you know, before he brings him back. Because he's obviously a decent player. Well, no, they've they spent money on him, Des, so he must be a decent player. Yeah. <coughs> but I, so, you know, I just, uh, it just intrigues me more than anything. Because yeah. I, I always felt that because Celtic have a plethora of centre-backs that he might go with a three at the back at some point in the future which then you say so if you're if you're going with a three you're still seeing Cameron Carter Vickers Liam Scales and they another from Nevrovsky Phillips or Lagerbielka aren't you? And are we quite happy at the moment to confirm that the best two centre halves are the current two? So uh, you know Liam and Carter Vickers nobody could argue that surely. Yeah. So so that's so the other and we're happy that with those two are sitting there you know, uh, behind, just waiting, you know, and, and that's something we've not had for a while, by the way. That's actually, we've always had problems with the centre-half position. Remember Marvin, go compare. Right? 
Mitchell and all that. You know, we never played a game, but we always we've always had that's been a niggly position. We've never ever. But now we're sitting there, Lagabelki's fit, and the other guy, you uh, the other guy pronounced no Rocky. No, you know Barry. No, you know it. Right? No, Rocky. No, Rocky. So, uh, by the way, for anybody who's just tuned in and think I'm in the boozles on a Friday morning, um, you'd be half right. It's my Gary's, but it's called Harry's Bar. Turned it into a pub during lockdown. There you go. I just had to mention that. I just had to mention that, Tony, just in case I'm thinking that McLean's always always in the boozles. <laughs> he, he, he's on the sauce early, yes, indeed. Right. So, yeah. that would be okay. I think it's good that the guys, you know, he's, he's playing in a game and Rogers, you know, is watching. <laughs> so it just means that we've got backup in the centre half position. Not a bad thing. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I wasn't being uh, disparaging when I said Rogers was there. I, I realised why he was here because he told those guys to go. So he wants to watch them in, in uh, match action and see them getting game time minutes and also see uh, the B team, anybody that maybe impresses. To get that promotion to the first team, I understand why he was there. I was just, it just kind of struck me as kind of, you know, a strange time to have a, a testimonial. You know, it's just, ah, just it, was. Of, it turned up from nowhere type thing. That was it, you know, more than anything else. But we were talking about, uh, you know, current Celtic players who are who are doing well in the team. You just mentioned them. Remember, we were talking off air about the the Bulgian Louis Palmer. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were saying about how fickle Celtic fans are and you can't please them all. And as I was saying, I was on a Celtic group chat and they were saying the guy's getting, he's good. No, if he'd pace, he'd be great. And you're thinking, wait a minute, hold on. That, that you know, they're never happy, right? But Palmer, we were talking about a guy who had no pace, but terrorised, you know, the defenders all over Europe back in the day, before our time. John Robertson, Martin O'Neill's right hand man. Yeah. I mean, that guy was incredible. He could not. He could not move. I mean, he this this man, John Robertson, no pace whatsoever. David Proven wasn't known for his face. But you know, Andres Perlo, but <laughs> you're not going to come in now. Are you trying to say Perlo's it? No. But um, yeah, so the pace thing, look at that cross at the weekend there that he put on. I mean, oh, can you imagine Lauren Shankland at the end of that? Thank you. <laughs> the man you described there, John Robertson, Brian Clough once said, Give him a ball and a yard of grass, and he's a Picasso. Oh. You know, and he paints pictures, and and I had the fortune of going down to Nottingham to see him recently, and an even better person, honestly. Just it was, it's one of the thrills of my life. I don't get starstruck, really, when you do this job. You have to learn to shed that uh, very quickly. But just yeah. sitting in, in his company and just oh, what a wonderful man, you know. And he was just, and he's just so humble. Which I loved about him, you know, and, and you tell him that you were one of, you know, he was one of my football heroes growing up, and you know, and he grabbed you. Thanks very much. That's really kind of you saying. You're just like, wow, you know, thinking, and I and I get back to what CV scored the winner in a European Cup final. He set up the winner in a European yeah, Cup final. Yeah. He scored the winner in a League Cup final. He scored at a World Cup finals for Scotland, and he scored the winner in a Scotland and England game. And a guy who also. All that success on the park, and he and he knew nothing but real tragedy off the park, yeah. you know, with a few family situations, and just the greatest guy, you know, just a, a lovely man. And you say no pace whatsoever, but give him a ball and a yard of grass, as Clough said, and he but, put a pinpoint cross in somebody's head, and he he would do wonderful things. And getting back to Palmer, isn't that all you need? That's all you need, and if, if the player's got incredible skill. Do you remember uh, there was a team, it was Cologne or somebody like that, were saying that they were yeah, yeah, yeah. Nottingham Forest and, you know, you shouldn't say things like that to Brian Clough and Brian Clough knew that was his secret weapon and he knew that he had no pace and he, used, and he turned down and they had said that they shouldn't be in the competition, they were going to beat them, they were going to make them look ordinary and uh, Brian Clough went, yeah, we've got a little fat man who's going to run rings around you, his name's John Robertson and it, it described Imagine a manager is describing a player as a little fat man. You know, imagine Roger. You know, it's hardly going to do that. So the fact that he can yeah. remember, he get one little fat man run rings around, and he was right, and he did. He and, and, he, and he was up against Manny Cout, who was the, yeah. I think it was the, you know, he was the, it was one of the right best right backs in the world at the time. He said, but I think it was when Cologne drew three each at the City Ground, yeah, and uh, the European Cup and. Forrest what to go over to Germany and he had to win and he stared down the camera. 
and said, I hope you're not oh. going to be so stupid as to write us off. And they won one now in the return, you know. And as you said, you get a, a fat guy that will run, def- run rings around the defenders. Well, 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 so you just tuned in, you're wondering why we're paying homage to the brilliant John Roberts and not the Forest. It's because we are comparing him to Palmer. Yeah. Right? The pace. We're, we're comparing the, 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 peop- the, the criticism that he has no pace. Yeah. And, and, and wingers, traditionally, not all of them have been blessed with the electric pace, but they've been able to make the use of the skills and the talents that they have. And we believe that Palmer is a talent and Absolutely. will get better for Celtic. And I, I totally agree. I, I don't really care about his pace, Des, because he's, no. he's, he's done some wonderful things in the short time that he's been at Celtic. Scored some oh. wonderful goals. He's crossed the other. A for O was... Sublime, I mean, absolutely oh, yeah. sublime. Just nonchalant again, talking about you bothering on Gallus. You know, I'm a good player and I'll show you how good I am. Go and put that in the next one. And as you say, can you imagine somebody like Shanglin on the end of that? I yeah. can, you know. So yeah. it's, uh, I, I take on board exactly what you're saying about Palm, and I think he'll only get better because he's feeling comfortable in his own skin now. That Celtic jersey fits him to a T, doesn't it? And he's enjoying his surroundings and he's. And uh, his environment, I like that about him. Every game he's going to get more confidence, he's going to get more swagger. He's the kind of player that will, as Bertie said, he'll entertain. He'll entertain. Yes. And he will. And, uh, yeah, but, you know, Celtic fans, uh, and all fans, that's fair enough, that they're, they're never happy, they're pretty fickle. It's a bit like if Didier Agat could cruise the ball in, he'd have been playing for Barcelona. <laughs> you know, speed, but his final ball was always like, oh, no. So this guy has got the skill and he can send a ball in, he can chip, he can hit a free kick, he can hit a corner in. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, the lack of... And, is, and is, almost is, by default, Des, we've discovered that he, actually, he can take penalties as well. Yes. And, uh, yes, hell of a, <laughs> hell of a run he, he took to that one. <laughs> that, was the, that was the thing that bugged me, the, the run he oh, up, the run up was, a, was, a bit of the, was a bit of the showboating before he'd stuck it oh, in the oh. net for me. And I'm never comfortable when I see guys do that, but he dispatched it, so... No, I, hate I, mean, that. I, I hate, hate that. I hate one, as well. Yeah, I hate that one yard when they walk up and they do that. Mm-hmm. You know that? Yeah, yeah, the one yard. Striker. Like the yeah. Super striker, yeah. <laughs> they just straight up and they take one step back, or that mad runny that he took. You were going, oh, hit it, hit it, hit it. Stop fanning yeah. about the oaks, as that you know the old days would say. But then, yeah, it was that that runny. I thought he better score this because if he doesn't, after that runny, no, no, they always give me kind of heart palpitations when I see a, a player do that because there is a kind of confidence about them but you're thinking you've still to score oh, <laughs> it's like that kind of, please score and before you do all that kind of stuff but listen he, he dispatched it no bother didn't he I loved before it when the, their goalkeeper tried to hide the penalty spot did you see that <laughs> yeah what was that all about? <laughs> it was like did you see that it was, it was like if I hide this that, that was bizarre <laughs> But as you say, usually I get you on when Celtic have been cuffed, and it's usually in Europe, to be fair. But uh, you would have enjoyed last Sunday. That was, a, as I want to say, the rip roaring, free scoring, never boring Glasgow Celtic, wasn't it? You and I said after the Atletico Madrid game, Celtic, the Celtic need to go and win convincingly, score a few goals if possible. Pummel, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pummeling, yeah, pummeling the right. And Celtic versus Aberdeen was the perfect game because, you know, Aberdeen, you know, it's still a team that you go, you know what, we want to beat Aberdeen. It wasn't a Ross County away or a Kilmarnock away that could have been a sticky wicket, could have been a banana skin. It was Aberdeen at home. It was a decent day, nice crisp day, and I thought Celtic were brilliant. They were, it could have been 9 nothing. Mm-hmm. But it's fair usual, on Sky, we don't talk about how good Celtic are, right away they went, Aberdeen were abysmal, Aberdeen were appalling. They always do that. They always do. Yeah. So it, was, it wasn't about how Celtic were free-flowing and, and incredible and making beautiful runs and what have you. But that was the game that we needed to put the Atletico Madrid. Yeah. Uh, to put the, to wipe that side. It just it did. It wiped over the stain of Madrid and all that. And to go and just go, bang, 6-0, there you go. That will do. Takes care of that. Is it? And it was a brilliant, a perfect game. Perfect game to bounce back because that could be psychologically damaging getting pumped yeah of course, right, of course any ground in Europe that was just horrible but we bounced back we bounced back with a vengeance yeah. and if Shanklin was on we might have scored eight 
<laughs> yeah, yes. Hazel Finn, love Maida so much, but he's crossing question mark. Palmer's sublime. Pace isn't everything. It's a good mix that he's yes. got. I, I agree as well. So I, I totally think that Palmer is going to get better for Celtic, and I can't wait to see an even better Palmer terrorising defences as we move along this season, Des. I think he is. I think he's going to be a, a real Celtic favourite. I think he's going to be that kind of player. He'll just get more and more gallus. He'll get, as I say, more of a swagger. And the more the goals go in, he's going to become a regular. He's going to be the kind of guy, if he's not playing, the fan, what? Where's Palmer? Already he's made an impression, you know. So, aye, I think yeah, he's, he's looking good. We're not getting carried away, but he's made an impact. Yeah. You know? I think when, when Jota left, everybody was hoping somebody could come in and fill the void in terms of the goals and assists. And, and now I think we've got a player who Picks all three boxes, he goals, assists, and, and talent as well. There's no shortage oh. of talent there. And I'm not comparing it to Jota, I'm just comparing the, the fact that Jota left and it left a big hole in your team and you thought, never mm. going to fill that, but this guy gives you hope that moving forward, he will be able to fill it and he will contribute just as much, if not more, than the, the coaching same. superstar, you know? A hundred percent, absolutely. He he has replaced Jota and <laughs> before the yeah. other then, uh, yeah, I'm going to argue that that he's probably... Jota wasn't as consistent. I don't think Jota was as consistent. But uh, we're getting a lot at this early stage. <laughs> They're not going to come in now. He's no <laughs> Jota, right? But the way that uh, the way that the, the Bargetti, Baresi, has made us forget about Starfelt, because we're thinking, we need to replace the guy. He has replaced him, and more. You know, he, he's Starfelt without the mistakes, let's be honest. Uh, great. <laughs> It's been a revelation, the boy. Well, he's kind of made us forget about Jota. He has. The guy's great. Yeah. He's exciting to watch. And he's a kind of guy, oh, get, 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 get him the ball. Get him the ball. He's going to do something. And it's, it's wonderful when you get a player like that. When you're like, get, get, get it to Palmer. Because you know he's going to do something. By the way, one of these days, he's going to know he's going to score for a corner. You know it's going to happen. He's already tried. <laughs> he's tried that couple of times, hasn't he? <laughs> he's going to do that. And he's going to do it. Brown Warrior agrees. Neither Starfield or Jota are missed. That's how much impact Berezi and Palmer have had. <laughs> I like the fact he's calling them Berezi. <laughs> we're, now, we're now calling him the Burgady. <laughs> Wait to see him drop from a great height from the team in due course. <laughs> put the, put the mark on the scales. You know? but, uh, long may continue. The man came from Burgady out your neck of the woods, out, out Monkland's way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, right, okay, right, okay, right, right, so, brilliant, the Burgady Burgady, I love it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, it was just a kind of alliteration of the bees because people are mentioning he's morphed into, like, Beckenbauer or Burgady, you know what I mean, so it could have been the Burgady Beckenbauer, it's, it was either or, just, I think the Burgady Burgady. Burgady is beautiful, poetry. Oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly, so, yeah, indeed. But yeah, I, I think there's a lot to there's, there's lots of reasons to be cheerful about Celtic just now, isn't there? Europe apart, and despite the fact that they've only got one point, there's they're still in with a shout of, you know, qualifying if they can get two wins, you know, go to Rome and win and beat Feyenoord at home, and hopefully Lazio don't pick up any points in their last two fixtures. So you know, it's a fighting chance, which. After the four games and the way they're sitting on the table, you thought, my goodness, they're still in there. So you have to go for that, don't you? Listen, two games. Yeah, listen, you're, don't make me bring it up again. Lazio at, Park, at Celtic Park. Yeah. Right? Last, I went on and on about it the last time and people were getting fed up with it. But that is where the damage was all done. However, we are still in with a fighting chance. And that's so Celtic, isn't it? We're always yeah. last chance to lose. If you do that, and if there's a couple of permutations, if they go their way, they, and yes, we are in there, but... Before the Atletico Madrid game, right, before we got that pumping, and let's be honest, it was nothing more or less than a pumping. Yep. Right? We were sitting pretty. We were saying Kyogo, oh, you know, he's on fire. O'Reilly's our player of the season so far. You know, he can do no wrong, although the papers are trying to sell him once again. Every turn, it's incredible. We're all going, everything's all. And then, as usual, as soon as we get pumped 6 now, which was... <laughs> It wasn't exactly the biggest coup and bust on the world, a team who had won 16 games in a row at home, you know, and the Celtic have never won in, in Spain. So, so you know, everything was okay before that. And as I said, when I, it wasn't a group of death, right? However, I did say one of these teams away, Celtic are going to fall short and we're going to 
you know, we're going to end up getting a wee pump and a cheeky wee pump. And it, and it happened at Atletico. I don't think it's going to happen again. But there, there's part of me always looks at it and goes, oh, the Celtic, just get into the Europa. Just get in there. It's more your kind of a playground. Than, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I hate to say it, but when we sit at the big boys' table, it's, you know, you're just going to come, you know, unstuck. It's just... And uh, they're simply not... They, they were never going to compete with Atletico Madrid away. Simple as that. But that aside, things are... You know... We're going to win the league. I'm confident of that. And it'd be nice to get the Scottish Cup. You've, okay. already, st- you've already stated that you feel that Celtic will win the league. You've declared that hand the early doors, haven't you? We were, if we beat Rangers at Celtic Park, that's it. Simple as that. We're not going to lose as many. We're not going to lose the amount of games required. <laughs> Rangers have finally got a wee batch of away games, right? So, no. Beat Rangers at Celtic Park and that's it. It, whatever happens with the game in hand, and all that we'll have just—it's just too much uh, of, a, of an advantage and the goal difference. As always, we've always got a bit of goal difference. Always got a bit of goal difference, and we have this season as well. Yeah, and signing somebody like Shankland could. Lauren Shankland. <laughs> and the case rests for the defence, you know. Hey, this isn't Shankland that's paying your, your money. <laughs> no, indeed. But, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, I think you're right. I, I think Celtic are in a good place, certainly domestically. Aren't right. they? They're, they're scoring goals. They're beating teams for fun. Palmer's looking sharp. Kyogo's back in amongst the goals as well. Oh, starting to be the player that you always hoped he would be. And, uh, yeah, so it's it's coming to the boil nicely for Celtic, I think. You call uh, Scales the Burgady Berese. I get into trouble for calling O the the Korean Cascarino, right? Because it's just <laughs> not many sitters. Let's be honest, right? I know we all, we all want to get behind the boy, but, oh, everyone was trundling there and bouncing <laughs> like that. He was just... And, and do you remember Klinsman was there to watch him and he was having a night? <laughs> yeah. it, must, it must be murder. Because you know he he, he could hit oh it, it was like oh he couldn't trap a bag of cement it was just horrible you know and then but that wee double the cheeky double at the weekend will do that boy's confidence no end I, I want him to be good I really do also I, think, I, I also I think the the winner against St Martin has made oh. him pop the chest out you know the way he took it the way it was set up by Odin Tiger home was brilliant but the actual finish and it proved it was a big big goal for Celtic. You know, secured a crucial three points and it proved to you as well, I can be a difference maker and I need to be. And I think strikers thrive on that, don't they? Listen, that was a big goal that day, big goal for Celtic, massive goal for, for O. And the quickness, Sutton commented, mm. the quickness of his, the way he took it, his first touch was beautiful mm. and then bang, finish. That was a real strike. That That's when he kind of stepped up and then when he got yeah. that, that's all he needed. That's all he needed was was a, was a few goals. Because in Sun, yeah. Uh, Brown Warrior saying that was an emphatic finish, Tony. Yeah, and the reason I brought it up was because on Sunday he had two or three options to square the ball as he's running through and goal, and it was like, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm taking this, and that's what I like about strikers when they're confident, mood like that, he scores. The Kyogo, uh, sorry, the Korean Cascarino wouldn't have buried that. <laughs> he would have fell over it or or, or picked the wrong pass. But he's yeah. that confident now in his own mind. He knew where he was going. He was running in and he was planking it in the bottom corner there as the goalkeeper came out to face him. And that's what I liked about it. You know, there's that that attitude, shifting attitude and, and mindset that he clearly has. Listen, for it, probably more important for a striker than any other position to get to hit the mark right away because right, people yeah. say, they're going away. I mean, this guy's no scoring, and that's it. It's telling a defender just has to kind of be solid at the back, but a, a striker has to score goals, nothing yeah. less. And I remember John Hartson saying, Remember, it took him a while to break his duck, and when he did, he, they just started to, you know, but and a lot of strikers took a massive relief, you know, Machiavelli as well. When he came at first, he took a week. So, um, yeah, definitely, if he starts getting the goals in, that's all he needs, like Palmer, it's just mm-hmm. confidence, and that's it. Yeah. And once they've got that. That's a big, it's a, a, a definitely a big monkey off the back there. And the saddest thing about it is he's probably going to hit his stride just as he gets called away to the <laughs> <He's doing laughs> You know, so you're just like, oh, you know, oh. It, ne- it never rains and all that. But, uh, so, you know, hey, it is what it is. But, yeah, I'm liking what I'm seeing from O now. I just think he, he was trying too hard as well. And he's the manager's clearly had a word with him and he's relaxed on it. And, 
you know, he's starting to show that he has what it takes to score goals for Celtic and be a difference maker at times. Absolutely, that that finish, um, and it takes a great cycle. It's starting to to rave about it. The, the quick, it was like lightning quick, and then bang, and it's yeah. a big game, big goal that got us the points. That, as I say, confidence world of good. And we're, we're, we are we're talking about the guys that are you know that we're enjoying watching at the moment. And uh, we Palmer, I love what you know. I want to see him on the ball. He's a real entertainer. He's brilliant. And but what about O'Reilly? The guy you can't. Superlatives galore. I can't say any more about the guy. He runs every game. It's he's <laughs> the ball, the pass. There's always a brilliant, like like absolutely clinical. There's a beautiful pass in every game that he'll put through that he doesn't get credit for, and it's just he, he's he's incredible. And as I said, the the media are all uh, at the moment they're trying to punt him to everybody, including Crystal Palace, the big gun. Uh, so it's, it's all the way. It's all the way. For ten million, <laughs> that old cliche. For what game? As Jock Steen once said, you know <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. Johnson, didn't he? Yeah, what game? Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I mean, I everybody who tunes in regular knows my thoughts on O'Reilly, and there might be a piece on the website over the weekend about O'Reilly. I'm currently working on something where you'll enjoy that. So uh, we not so much a wee teaser, not a spoiler, but keep your eye out on the the website for that and if you enjoy what we do here then we ask you every week or every day that we're on why not subscribe to the Celtic Way website it costs four pounds for four months which is a our current offer just now or take out a yearly subscription it costs you 18 pounds and you can help support top quality football journalism covering the club you love in the process we have guests like Des on and various others but hit that button, guys, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. That's www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. And as we always say, we thank your sponsors, MPH Group, for all your plumbing, heating, kitchen and bathroom needs and the Navian promotion. Check out all their uh, social media uh, sites on our in the description of this video, all the links to the social media are on that as well as our phone number. Des, as always, that's just been short of the hour. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. It's coming Friendly back to the Pavilion. For any Celtic fan, Pavilion Theatre, Stockton filler. Thank you. Listen, it's been a pleasure and thanks uh, for getting us on uh, once, finally, not after a major pumping in Europe against the Atletico or other teams. It was always after a big European game. But it's been, listen, it's been absolutely lovely the thank you for all the comments for the the podcast uh viewers listeners wherever you are facebook or youtube or whatever it's been great all the comments have been pretty positive mix <laughs> pete mc g's not letting it go just before i sign off tony it was you who mentioned shankland and mclear in the same sentence no me i relax my valise i just poked the bear no i think it was days that mentioned it pete <laughs> <McGee>. <laughs> What I, said, what I said was... Like Again, we'll go into it, Pete, for the hard of... Right. He's got a wee team, he doesn't get as many chances. But if he goes to a big team like Celtic, he gets more chances, which means there will be more chances of goals. He's not Aaron McClure. But if he goes to Celtic, he gets more chances. <laughs> Something like that. Can't put it any more succinctly or any better than that, Pete. Oh, Pete yeah. he's just winding us up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has winding us up. That's why I always throw his comments up because he's a oh. big winged up person. Uh, he he's always uh, on at us for our timekeeping. We always say tennis. We always say it for. <laughs> Does he? Does me G? Yeah, I pass it. Oh, he pulls himself every day. I love for. that. Hey, I'm on back. He's like five. Five past ten. It's six minutes past ten. You're, you're late. And I love that. It's absolutely brilliant because he it's, keeps coming back and he keeps subscribing and he keeps uh, he keeps tuning in. So I uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate everybody. It's is this the modern equivalent of the old guy moaning at the paper boy for being late? I think uh, so. This is the digital version, isn't it? It's hey, the digital version. Hey. I'm waiting all morning. My paper, my cup of tea. No, it's no, it's, <laughs> it's the modern version. Uh, oh, you, you should have been online five minutes ago. The bold Pete McGee, the modern day brilliant. I love Pete. Right. Pete, have a wonderful Friday, sir. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you on Monday. But as you say, we thank MPH Group for sponsoring the Celtic Way morning briefing and the pre and post match briefing. So for all your plumbing, heating, kitchen and bathroom needs in the Nav Navian promotion, tune into the description 
of the website you'll find all the social media links there and we ask you as always to hit that subscribe button four pounds for four months or 18 pounds for a yearly subscription www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe that's www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe all that's left for me to say is thank you to our friday guest got that friday feeling <laughs> you've always got it with this man around des mclean he's become a good friend but he's his thoughts on celtic are never wider than mark either which is why we get him on but thank you des it's a uh, it's always a quick hour it's always a funny hour or a happy hour should we say considering your surroundings that lovely and, uh, <laughs> and we always enjoy it and we always let you do your thing with the Bertie Alden. If you haven't seen Bendit or Bertie, ladies and gentlemen, go and see it. This man's a star turn. And uh, yeah, but friend of the show, top man all round and always enjoy it when you're on days. Chat's great. So thanks very much. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. I always say it's result dependent, but there's no club football. Oh, and we yeah. badly miss it, don't we, Des? We badly miss it. Uh, International Week just yeah, seems to get yeah. longer and longer. Uh, but yeah, but thank you so much, fella. You're always a star. Appreciate it. Always, right. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. It flies by. Flies by. Indeed, guys. That's over the hour. So we'll call it a day there and we'll see you back on Monday. Have a good weekend. Take it easy. <laughs>